Hello, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Music Effect Design and Design <laughs> Details. We're your hosts. I'm Jordan Pittner. I'm a music educator, a visual designer, and drill writer out of Phoenix, Arizona. And my name is Mike Kruger. I'm a music educator, composer, arranger out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm Holly Paxton. I'm a color guard educator and a music teacher in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. Welcome back, guys. Hey. How you been? It's been a party. You're like back I, to school. Well, I have been, we yes, we did use the word educator in our intro, so <laughs> it's it's been an interesting time. But but you know, been, but been great. We're back. We're back at it. Holly, you're back at it too, right? We're all yep. back at teaching. We're in yeah. week five, and we're going back oh, to in wow. person in two weeks. Whoa. Dang, we're, yeah. we're only in week one. We just started back up this week. I didn't realize you were so far in. Yeah, Arizona's way ahead of others. I mean, I also just think Ohio's behind, like schools that wait till September to start. I'm just like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, colleges ha have a tendency to start later anyway. Right, so, right. It's the combination of Ohio plus college. Like, I think U of A and ASU went back two weeks ago. Hmm. So, yeah, that's about the time. It's that. about the time my school used to go back. Hmm. I gotta tell you, I've. I've been wanting for a while to start one of these videos. I'm going to do it in the next two weeks with like, uh, you know, the eighties thing where they like start over here and then go, hello, like that. You know what I'm talking oh, no. about? Yeah. I'm going to do that. One. It's like, oh, like no. uh, corporate HR videos, you know? Oh, I didn't see you there. Oh, Hey, oh, hello. <laughs> like uh, that SNL skit with Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> man. Okay. Well, we have a show that I guess we're doing at this current moment. So hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hey, I am really excited about today. We're going to talk about what we're labeling culture through COVID. So, I mean, a lot of our early videos have been about how to operate in different aspects of kind of where we find ourselves this fall with maybe marching band in a different format, maybe no marching band at all in person, out of person. Um, so, I mean, we're going to do our best to uh, sort of address the different, some of the different formats, but ultimately, I think a lot of the conversation we're going to have today comes down to just sort of root foundational ideas. So it doesn't necessarily matter, you know, if you're in person, if your schedule is, is normal, or if you're online, hopefully some of these things are going to apply to you in some way you can figure out how to make these work no matter what your situation is. And um, we're going to break this down into three different uh, subtopics, right? Number one, we're going to talk about building culture through performance. Number two, through leadership. And then finally, um, probably most importantly, in, in my opinion, is building culture through values. So with that, let's get started. Yeah. Um, number one, performance. So building culture through performance. I think Mike, you've been really vocal every conversation we've had for like a couple months now about building your culture through performance and some of the different things that you have going for your program. So my first question for you specifically is what does building culture through performance mean to you? And then how are you tackling that this year? Awesome. Well, two questions, Jordan, come on. No, um, asking. Oh man. Um, well, <clears throat> so it's, it's a very interesting time for all of us, right? from a collegiate level all the way down to, you know, elementary with, with music making. And so um, through performance, and so in particular, whether it's singing or, or performing, playing on your instrument, whatever performance is for your group. So the, the big thing here for me is that uh, building culture through performance um, at, at, at the core of what we do in music, right, is to make sound. And so that's an action and that, that requires some kind of performance skill. Um, and the, the thing that's really tough about COVID is that not only is it, you know, truly a tragedy and, 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 and awful, right? But it's also trying to take our art form away. So it's not just attacking our life and our health, but it's also attacking what we do for our life and what we love. And so it's not just a physical thing, it's also mental, it's emotional, it's what we love to do. And so finding a way to get past that is so important. Um, and that comes along in many different ways. Um, so performing uh, performance, um, building that culture of performance, um, to me means um, we've eliminated 
kind of the performance aspect, actually. Mm-hmm. We're kind of talking about building culture through rehearsal and just making music mm-hmm. because we can't really have performances. Most of us, the pressure of performances is kind of gone. So where I'm at in my college, I mean, like many universities and colleges out there, we don't have football, right? So there's not an athletic program. There's not a marching band like this fall. So instead of having to perform in two weeks at, right after band camp, like most of us do, that pressure is gone. So we're still performing, right? We're still rehearsing. To me, a rehearsal is still like a performance. Yeah, I mean, but too. right, I think you treat it that way. Mm-hmm. But there's, it's, it's intimate. It's just us. It's us in that room. We know where we all are and we get to work and perform and grow together. And so the, the really fun thing has been um, like, we just get to teach. We just get to teach and make music. Right. And there's not pressure. Like if a student comes in and in, in, in my college and or for any program and they're not performing at maybe the level of what you want them to be, they would still have to go out there in that field and perform. But that's a pretty scary thing for a lot of students. So I think the nice thing about um, trying to take an approach of like, how do you still perform? How do you still rehearse? How do you still make music? Yeah. Is that it's still definitely possible. Um, so so p- building performance or culture for me um, is very much centered around the idea of growth, which we've talked about. Um, it's looking at where our students are and what we can do um, to make them get better and we have the time to do it. And that's kind of the wonderful thing about it. It's, you know, the silver lining, I guess, if you would. Right. Yeah. And so, um, so that's what that means to me for, for now. I have obviously more to talk about all of this, but that's just a start. Yeah. No, th- that's a great start. Holly, do you have more to, more to add to that? Yeah. So one of the things we're doing for the group that I work with, we're, we're doing sort of like what Mike's doing, which is turning rehearsal, into something different that we couldn't do before just because of the demands of performance and needing to get something ready to put on the field. Uh, So we're working on technique and, you know, doing those things, but it's for fractions of the amount of time we used to. But now we have time to evaluate performances. So we're able, because we have three people on our staff and we've taken some videos that we like from the past I would say few years, but really it's the past like 25 years we've had videos and, you know, having the kids talk about them and analyze them and just, you know, get to look at aspects of performance quality that we wouldn't really get to do the same way when we were all the way in person. Uh, So it's been pretty cool having those conversations and getting them to look at stuff in a new way. And just to clarify for people Mm -hmm. listening, you, can you, describe your learning situation for your guard students just a little yeah so this as of now we are doing a two-hour sectional once a week and that's like that's it that's our whole rehearsal and from before we probably had 14 hours of rehearsals in a week um so like and you're fully virtual and we're fully virtual there's no in-person aspect yeah so you, you care if I jump back in a little bit? So we're 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 on a little bit of a different end on this. We're, so with for me, um, at the at the collegiate level, we're doing kind of a hybrid type deal where, yeah. um, based on Ohio's regulations, you can only have so many people in so many places, you know, in a place, and and for good reason, right? And so um, for for ensembles for band in particular, um, the auditorium in which I'm in can have about twenty people in it at a pretty safely. Um, like on stage spread out with plenty of distance and so um, Holly I feel you on that we 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 used to have five hours of marching band rehearsal a week followed by extra rehearsals and performance on game day and rehearsals between and but right now we don't really have that ability so what what the focus shifted for us was how do we get our students the same quality with less time and what we decided to do was um, because of our kind of like limitations a little bit in our facilities and what we have um we've we, we divided the band in by section guard percussion women's brass by family and we rotated them during normal band, uh, band time which is 4 30 to 6 30 uh, tuesday thursday and what we did was um we have a guard and percussion is meeting twice a week one's marching focused for percussion one's concert focused 
for guard, one is more marching oriented with some of the skill sets and technique base. And one of them is kind of like a winter guard show. They're learning. Um, um, we have a space for that. But the woodwind and the brass family are working on fundamentals for an hour a week, followed by a few weeks into it, we're, we're having them go into like woodwind choir music, brass choir music. And they're learning like, you know, a central repertoire for those, for, for that type of music. But on Fridays, what I get really excited about was we have, we added Friday rehearsals a year ago and it's for an hour and 15 minutes. And um, so the, the problem was, was you don't, you, you're playing in the, you know, with a woman family, but you're not really getting a wind ensemble. You're not really getting the full band, right. but we can't have a full group meet. So we took the flex scores that have been going on. Frank the Kelly has been huge on that. And his, and it's really, really, really amazing. Um, it's really great work. All the composers and arrangers out there have, have done some great things. We've taken that and we divided the band, all the wind players, um, into SATB groups uh, between eight and 10 players. So they have four different ones that rotate on Fridays for half hour blocks. And they're learning standard traditional, you know, repertoire. And we're rotating them bi-weekly to do that. Um, and the percussion section is a core group of five people who are going to fit plug into those groups within a few weeks when they get more comfortable. So, so we found a way where we felt our students were able to get individual attention in their family, like you would get in a marching band, like during band camp with in sectionals, but also with the individual attention you would get in a wind ensemble. And so I actually believe that the quality of education and the attention to detail that our students are going to get this semester is actually going to be at a higher level than we've been able to offer before because it's so individualized. And so There's no I'm like distraction of also needing to clean visual right. anything, at least right. in what, these situations. A absolutely. If this was your, if, say you come into a program and this is your gap, you know, between ability, your top your, and, and, and where your lowest is, when you provide individual feedback, whether it's going to be in person or, or online, when you're able to structure it in a way where you can give more direct individual feedback, you might not see this increase as much, but you're going to see this increase a lot. But ultimately what that does to these people up here, it provides a better ensemble for them because they're, that's what they're waiting for. They yeah. need that. And so it's all around a win-win. So that's what we've been kind of focusing on our end um, to kind of meet the needs of our students and the environment around us. So that, that's us building performance or culture um, or through COVID. Um, and, and that's a, it, it's, it's a difficult thing, yeah. but our students, we just find, had our last sectional meeting tonight. I just got back an hour from an hour ago from it and they are pumped. They really are. They're really excited for it. So that's what we're kind of doing. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things that I really admire about both of you is that you continue to be um, good students and learners as you are teaching others and i think what's going to be really cool i think we'll come back to this near the end uh of tonight but i think probably the processes we're going through right now are going to kind of alter the way you do things when we go back to a more normalized or a more normal uh thing later on you know in a year or however long it ends up being um so i think yeah. it's cool i think you have to be willing to get rid of kind of the ego of like what we're so used to. Like, you know, when I was younger and I dreamt of being a band director, which is what I really was always hopeful to be. Like I thought of this big old band and doing all these cruel things. And like, you have to kind of get rid of that. You have to kind of be okay with saying, does that actually really matter? Or does just making music matter? Right. And you really have to kind of be able to get over, I think in many ways, the limitations we kind of put in our own, our own head. Like we think band is this thing. It has to be this big old thing, but no, chamber ensembles are great. Right. So I think, I think we have to be willing to adapt. That's what it's about. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, any other pointers or anything that you could see for somebody who's doing exclusively online, anything that you would add for building culture through performance? Uh, uh, for me, it's like just still giving people the chance to like communicate with each other. Right. Uh, cause like in a live performance aspect, there's the, like the interaction of I'm playing with you, you're playing with me or we're spinning here together. Right. So what right. can you do to still make pieces of that happen? Mm -hmm. So like in the rehearsals we have, like having the kids talk to each other about 
the videos and not just in conversations with the adults, but like letting them talk with each other about things and, you know, getting like what Mike's doing is getting them to play in small groups and getting to hear each other. So sort of like interactive things yeah. well, to perform together. Yeah. And Holly, when we were working on some of those things in the summer, test trying some of the electronics, whatnot, you were really helpful with figuring out kind of like what the breakout rooms kind of are in like Zoom. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about like what that can look like? Yeah, it's it's a real party. Uh, Zoom breakout rooms do give you the chance to like mix and match people around. And uh, I am, would be wrong to say that I am anywhere close to being an expert in Zoom breakout rooms. But uh, being able to just like put these kids over here and put these kids in this room and like, you know, just really handpicking who goes where gives you a chance to custom customize what the learning experience that they could have and you know letting there be a big room and a small room and you know you can do things by sections and you can pop in and it's it's cool i thought for a moment there you were gonna go like cool adult for a second your hands are like let me tell you about this fellow youth <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like turn your hat around I thought it was going to happen. Me. Yeah. So just for anybody who doesn't know, breakout rooms are in Zoom. They're called breakout rooms. I think other places have something similar. But essentially, it's a way to take your big cluster of students that you have, divide them up. Maybe you've got woodwinds, brass, and percussion uh, in a music group, and you can divide them up into sectionals for a little while. And then when you want them to come back together, you can close those rooms and they can all come together. Um, or even, you know, I could see some opportunity when Holly's talking about, you know, breaking having the guard uh her guard students discuss with each other uh what to do you could use the breakout rooms for that you could split mm -hmm. them up somehow and then bring them back that's another opportunity so just be creative like at the end of the day your educational uh priorities are are the same we're just trying to be creative in how we're building uh these things as we as we go through set set your priorities right, right. as a director right. Like mm -hmm. as your as a staff, set what's important to you, and realize what resources you have. Like, so for example, if you're a part of a larger band, right, you might get worried about like, um, if you're in high school, right, like in, at the collegiate level, we have class meets for two hours. I can tell them, hey, only come for half. But at a high school, you can't do that. They have to go somewhere, right? So understanding, like at that point, you have to have a place to put people if you are meeting in person, hypothetically, and so like understanding, like okay. Do I have three directors and do I have three facility spaces where I can use? So, you know, really understanding your resources overall. Um, I think, you know, just align those resources with what you're really hoping, like, like align those with what you're wanting to do with your program, you know, and if you can't find a way to do that, then you might have to make some compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Cool. It's a good conversation. I think all of that's really great. Building through performance is to me, it's, kind of the the surface level of what we're doing uh let's let's dig into the next level like one level deeper uh down the pyramid or whatever analogy metaphor you want to use and that's building culture through leadership uh and and i'll start this one out and then and then we'll kind of open the floor for um the two of you but w when i think leadership i'm thinking um students who need or are seeking extra development beyond just the performance side. Um, I think leadership is, leadership can, let me say it this way, leadership can be pretty simple to develop over the course of a season, uh, whether it's competitive at the high school level or, uh, you know, performance-based with, with football games and everything at the college level. I think it's really easy when you've got a big group together and then you're subdividing them and you're saying, you take this group and you take this group and developing them. It's not so easy right now if you don't have those uh, performances you're gearing yourself towards, right? Uh, I think that can kind of put some, put some feet onto the fire a little bit. Um, so when we've done leadership programs in the past, uh, and that's true, this is also true for our current leadership program that we offer on our website, uh, we tend to do what we call like 
simulation and feedback, I think is probably the best term I would use for it. Mm -hmm. um, would either of you like to explain a little bit about sort of what that is and how we've used leadership in the past to, to sort of develop it with students? Sure. Um, I mean, I'm happy to jump into all those things. I, the, the biggest thing about leadership um, is tying in a concept, all right, whether it's to the larger picture. So, um, so for example, there are a lot of ways you can go about leadership. You can talk about it. You, you can just have conversation. But we found that a lot of times doing some kind of activity or having something where, like, it relates to a greater picture that um, – it, it's you're able to have a conversation and relate it back to life. I think that's the really important part. So there's a lot of different things that can mean, right? Um, but generally speaking, most students, even at the college level, like to have fun. They like to play some games. They like to have some fun. So I think that, you know, finding a way to do something that's engaging with a leadership as kind of like an activity. Um, one thing that sticks in my mind is something we did years ago where we had uh, – hula hoops that were all around us and we were holding mm -hmm. hands and we had to get around people as fast as you could. And like, like I'm a little bit bigger guy. That hula hoop was a little bit harder for me. I'll be honest. But like, but like, um, you know, I remember like people on the team while we were holding hands, like really helped me out. We really got that done quickly. Right. Yeah. So one of the things we, that we related that back to in our conversations was like, be aware, look for the people around you and like, really look out for what they need and try to make adjustments without even having to say anything. Just look for out for those people. And so like, that's a concept that ties into marching man or anything you do. Right. I mean, I mean, anything we do, well, you know, walking in a practice room and hearing someone struggle, you know, and taking time to help them to, to me, leadership's really defined really by kind of one phrase. And that is um, people who take time to help others when they don't have to. Cool. You know, I love that. and, 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 yeah, I mean, and so to me, like finding a concept and activity and, and, and then being able to do that and can then, like you said, get feedback. Like, right. okay, how did that go? What does that mean? What is this in the bigger picture? How does this relate? So I think that that's really a great example to, or a great model for leadership in the marching arts. Yeah, you know, to me, it goes back to one of the things I care a great deal about is um, competition. And that might sound a little bit weird to say like, Oh, competition's a big deal. I don't necessarily mean um, like scores and things like that, but I think one of the great things about an activity like that is it's, it's kind of stupid, but at the same time, like people get obsessed with going as fast as they can. Like, I mean, 30, we did, we did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, right. and I find young people all the time get just crazy about like dropping another two or three seconds off of that. How can we do it? How can we make things just a little bit better? And it leads to good conversation and, uh, one of the things that's great that happens a lot of times is that it starts to build some frustration, right? Just like your season, you start to work really hard and some people don't see exactly eye to eye and it can create some tension. So I think this year, especially, I think people care about competition. To me, that means doing your best or putting your best effort forward um, and, and seeing the results of that. So I think it's especially important this year to have something like that. Like, I think games are just a great way to do it as long as you continue to do it in a productive and healthy environment, just like competition. Like yeah. it can be, it can be toxic and it can become too much. So it's finding the right, the right balance between healthy and, and over obsessed or negative or whatever. So. Yeah. The yeah. benefit, like, I mean, we talked about how it being a game just makes it fun, yeah. but having it be something totally separate of what they're thinking of when they think of leadership, uh, it helps build a stronger understanding because they're applying, you know, skills from a game into something that they know. And it's, you know, building off of, you know, a totally different world almost of like this game. And we tried to talk to each other like this. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, but what about in band? How does it work there? And yeah. it just draws such good deep connections and they can just experience the game without trying to think about, well, what does this mean about leadership? Ver you know, versus a like leadership lecture model where it's like, this is how leaders do things. Like, you know, it, it lets you get a little like more applicable knowledge. Yeah. You, you see it in action, whether you realize it or not. Mm -hmm. I think the other <laughs> side of this is like, we're talking very much about kind of the content, you know, like mm -hmm. 
activities and whatnot. But then I think you have to also look at kind of the parameter or structure of what you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to just, I know I've talked a little about my program this, but I mean, that's, to me, it's what it's we're great. trying to do. I mean, it's yeah. what we're trying to do. So, so we do our Friday SATV groups and that goes to 215. But after that, from 215 to 245, for a half hour for seven different sessions throughout the semester, so every other week, starting in week two, we offer a 30-minute leadership session that's open for everyone in the band. So for the first time all week, everyone can actually see each other, not just in sectional or small groups. I think one of the biggest things cool. is like with leadership comes, you know, other ideas, you know, hearing other people out and experiencing other people. And, and, and it's, it's really an awareness thing to me. And so like the more we can get our students an opportunity, even for half an hour to see everyone, right. it's optional, but we have a space where we can easily maneuver and like have that, the, those many people, whether it's outside. And we also have the staff where we can divide it up. So like it's, it, we have, we have an opportunity where students can come together and, and we're not really doing activities. It's definitely more of a conversation base with this, this semester with my group, just the way it turned out. But we're, we're, you know, it gives our folks an opportunity, honestly, to potentially see the full band. And I think that's really important because a lot of them are really close and have friends and they care about each other. Um, and the, the other side of this as well is like from a staff perspective, like, are you, are you doing what you're asking of your students to do on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. So if the point of an exercise is to teach value and respect for others, are you doing that as a director at all times? Are you walking through and are you, when you have students to help you during study hour or work study or whatever, are, are you giving the coordinator as much respect as your librarian? Are you giving your freshmen as much respect as your senior section leader? Are you understanding that like as a director, you're walking down and you're not just playing favorites, but you're really paying attention to all those around you. And so I think that during this time, it's really important to be thinking about those things because there's a lot of students who need a lot of love right now. And so I really think that as a leader, um, if anything, leadership's really gonna be defined, I think by many times a director right now, because they're gonna be looking up to those people to be leading by example. Yeah. And so I, I encourage people to really take the time to think structurally about what they can achieve and then think about the content and then think, okay, this is what I'm trying to teach my students. Am I doing this myself? Um, and, and, and so those are kind of like three really important things to me. Um, yeah. Because if you're, not, if you're not demonstrating what you're trying to show, if you do a leadership activity and you're a hothead for the other four days of the week, like what's the point? There's, there is not, well, they're going to yeah. know, they're going to read right through. Who's going to buy in, so, right? So be, yeah, be genuine, be, right. be genuine and be open for your change too. If a student brings up a great point, let it change you. Nothing wrong with that. So leadership is critical. And I think it's really important right now because um, I would argue that it's one of the easiest things to lose right now. And so if anything, we need it more. Yeah. Yeah. Well said to kind of sum up this category. I'll just say this, when we're talking about playing games, it's ultimately so you can dissect what your students' habits are as leaders, what their tendencies are, so you can continue to coach them in a positive direction. Give them, give them an opportunity to, to lead, right, beyond, beyond just games. And those opportunities will come. Um, but you, you have to be very, I think one of the requirements of us as educators this year is being open to experiences. I can't give you a list of 10 different places you'll find it this year because you, the person watching, are going to have a very different situation than, than any of us do. Almost right. certainly, like everybody's doing things a little bit different. So be open and, and focused on finding those opportunities. And, and, you know, don't compare yourself like to others either. And what I mean by that is if you ever talk to like, the great like a great coach or a great performer or a great director or a great program many of them they don't talk about oh well i try to represent and model after this person and they go no they, they talk about i understood what my program needed and i made it my own right. and i think that's really important during this time is um really assess your group really talk to your students really talk to your staff your parents mm -hmm. really understand where people are and customize it to meet those needs because if you really want to do something exceptional, you're going to, you know, kind of be a trailblazer, you know, and, and really like make your own path there. So 
you know, don't, don't be afraid about what others are always doing. You can use it as a reference, but, you know, make it your own. Really make it genuine. Make it, make it important to you. Yeah. And that's leadership. Leadership 101. All right, we're done. No. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the, kind of the final level. And to me, this is really where the root of everything takes place. I know some people like to do things sort of the opposite of us, start at the bottom and build up. But I'm hoping in doing this backwards, you can sort of see, you know, these decisions, these things we've talked about early, this is where they really stem from. All right. Uh, and that's building culture through or building values through culture, building values through culture. So when you, I'm, I'm going to ask the two of you kind of a tough question here, and I'm, I'm going to participate as well. When you think about values for your programs, the groups that you work for, what are, I mean, I don't need like the number one value, the number two value, because we could be here for an hour. But when the word value comes to your mind, what are some of the things that you would say, you know, these are my values. These are the things that I really try and put forth with my programs that I'm working with. Yeah. Um, for, for me and the groups that I, I work with, I really, I'm probably not going to hit all of the, like the big ones, but I'm going to try, but like holding themselves to a high standard is something that's important in person and online. Like, like for me, one of the basic things we do is like, okay, we're doing four counts and somebody goes five counts instead of four counts. It's like, oh, let's try again. We have to, we can do this, but we can hold ourselves to the highest standard. Just yeah. because we're online doesn't mean, you know, we're going to have like our expectations are different, but not in all of the ways. Like we can still hold ourselves to high, high, high expectations. So and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. You're, you're answering both parts of the question, which is great. Oh, uh, that okay. was kind of the next thing, but the value oh, okay. is the value itself. No, that's, that's great. That's <laughs> where we're going next, but hold yourself to the highest standard is one of your, one of your major values. That's great. Um, Mine, to me, when I work with a program, the one that I think I focused on most is I believe that band can be good for everyone and everyone can be good for the band. Um, and that's something I, I really believe in or the group, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not always band, but for me, most often it's band. So that, that's one of mine, one of my values I pull myself to. What's one that comes to your mind, Mike? So your value, one of your values is, a scroll. is value, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, one of your values is value, valuing others. Um, for me, I agree. So value is a huge part of what I do. Um, I mentioned growth earlier, but to me, that stems from a very humanistic emotion and a feeling that um, I think a lot of, um, it's actually, it's one of the things I love the most about Gen Z um, is empathy. And uh, like, I love it about me, the younger generation is that I see a lot of things there that I think it's just such a great thing about their generation um, is that there's a lot of empathy. So at the core of like value or growth to me, you have to be able to take time to be able to relate to someone and be able to understand where they are. And that's a very humanistic feeling. That's a, that's, that's an emotional thing. Yeah. And so to me, if you're able to teach like it's kind of the golden rule, and, and, and empathy you're able to kind of spark naturally people having value for others and growth mindset and so to me like nothing really changes things stronger than an emotion or a feeling yeah. and so to me empathy is like a huge aspect of what um is important to to me in my program so that's just some of the values that right. that we have have established. These are things that are important to us that we want to kind of pervade the culture of the groups we work with. Um, Holly, you said one of the ways that you hold your groups to a high standard is by, uh, well, just making sure that they're not getting away with little things that, you know, maybe that are easy to get away with. I've seen you do that in... Um, I almost said real rehearsal. That's not really the right word I, I want. But when you're in, in person, the other room while I'm doing rehearsals over here. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I've 
when I say real rehearsal, I mean, I've seen you do that, you know, for a season in person, I've seen you, you know, be a, be a stickler about that stuff. Um, and that can be hard in your online format. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the value for you of having people held to that standard like what's your what's your hope for the end result when we get through let's say this season like the fall holding them to a high standard like that I mean I feel like if I am holding them to a high standard then soon they're going to absorb that into who they are and maybe that high standard just starts to be internal when it comes to their spinning with their flag technique with what with their performance quality and that starts to become internal within color guard and then over time that high standard starts to you know seep into other parts of their lives like you know if the standard is when you know when it's time to go it's time to go you're set like that that can apply in a lot of places not just in color guard it's important that we get that built in the color guard for good rehearsals um, but it, it applies a lot outside. So, you know, yeah, things yeah. like holding them to a high standard inside rehearsal and high expectations, my goal is for them to make that just part of who they are and help them become better people. Cause that's what we're doing here, right? We're just trying to build better people and having yeah, high yeah. expectations. And it like applies to each other. Like oh, I, yeah. if I hold them to a high standard, they hold each other to high standards and it, the years add up and the group gets better because you know they have years of expectations now to hold each other up to and kind of, it's fun uh, yeah the group expectation becomes the individual expectation that's cool yeah you know um for mine i think i think it's really difficult to make sure everybody feels like an ensemble is valuable to them um i, I guess i should i should say this i think it's easy to make a lot of people feel like band is valuable to them it's hard to make everybody feel valued and also like they're getting something out of it and, you know that's not something i've always accomplished i feel like um i've seen some people who are disengaged before and i kind of i like in the past i've sort of not ignored them but sort of let them sort of be who they are um and then just to realize they like didn't feel like they were part of it you know that's right. that's a thing that can happen so being super aware is is part of that in your whatever format you're in you know if that's something if you agree with me that everybody can find value and and value can come from everybody be be aware be very aware this year you know i I would consider like making a checklist for people this year, probably because it's so easy to get, it's so easy to get bogged down in like, okay, I've got this technology to run and I've got this equipment to make sure it's good to go. And I got to make sure everybody's in and, and, you know, all that stuff, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in like everybody needs to be there and ready on time. That's kind of hard to, to handle this year. Right. Cause there's like technology issues and there's all these extra things that could be extra steps uh, in the way, but just being mindful of like, not not being like reprimandy but just open to like hey what's you know what's going on how can we help how can we make sure that you're you're set up for success and make sure that everything in their life is is going in a great way um i don't know there's just a lot of <laughs> things that can go wrong this year not only from a technology side but also from like a a, a life side and uh yeah and it's really easy for people to fall through the cracks this year yeah, right because like like i know that in my classes I, we've been at, I just, i'm teach elementary school music and like the way that the schedule set up it's really easy for kids to like not show up mm -hmm. and like it's already hard to show up but it's like i i get concerned sometimes and i'm like okay cool, I finally have like half of this class in here. This is a great thing. And, you know, it's focusing on like the good part, but like I have half the class, but I still have, you know, five, you know, half the class that has maybe only shown up once or has never come to music. And it's yeah. like trying to find that balance of like, you know, celebrating the kids that you have and still trying to get to the kids that aren't there, like, or having a harder time being there. 
And that's especially tough in your your age group and in your full time job. Yeah. I don't know how you There's do so it. little. <laughs> I don't know either. I seriously don't. <laughs> uh, oh, we're taking each day as it comes in the little person land. Is that what we're calling it now? No, well, I don't know. They're all, I was like, they're all tiny, but like once they hit fourth grade, they get to be taller than me. Uh, and that's usually their celebration of like, I'm taller than Ms. Paxton. You're the first, you're their first like benchmark. Yeah, it's not oh a very high benchmark. Cool. Uh, Mike, anything else to, to add? Uh, yeah. Um, I, so it's funny, you know, we, I, I think of um, the standard of excellence books, right? Mm -hmm. The word excellence comes to mind. I think of where I went to high school, the tradition of excellence was, was our motto. Um, I think of excellence a lot. You said in the bar high, but I have found myself the past couple of years never talking about it mm -hmm. um, ever to my folks um, because I have found that they kind of just start doing it now. Um, and, and when I say empathy is like having emotion, you know, emotional, you can relate emotionally to something. Like awareness. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Emotional awareness. Right. And so for me, that's such an important thing. Um, when I started with many of my conversations this week in my classes I teach or in the ensembles, um, I, after I go through the boring syllabus stuff, which I usually try to fly through, I open up the floor a lot and I was like, okay, so what is, what's going on in your life? What's, what does COVID mean to you right now? And what, what is, has anything happened? And what, what does this being here right now mean to you? Like what, what's important about this? Mm -hmm. And, and um, some students give some pretty real answers and that's a great thing. But I think the thing about that is if you start caring about the people around you, that includes if they're successful, mm -hmm. right? And so um, to me, it's just, it's something I, I try to demonstrate. It's just something I'm real proud of my staff. They do amazing jobs. I, I think they do an outstanding job of being there for our students and, and, and at all times. I mean, they're really exceptional. And I think that our students do that for each other. Um, and, um, it was pretty much a pretty big core value we started implementing a few years back because that's not how this program has been always. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that growth happen. Um, but I, I like to think that for, for where I'm at, and this is obviously it all depends on who's, what program you're at and, 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 yeah. and who's doing, who's involved. Because every person is different. <laughs> Me trying to be some uppity, woo, Ra, ra, ra person would not come off as being very genuine to my folks mm -hmm. but me having a real life conversation like this my students respond to that because they know that's how i am yeah. and so i think that um empathy is so important um because what i saw was after many times after those students spoke after we got done who did i see go walk over to those students and make conversation for them for the first time meeting them our returners yeah. You know, or fresh, you know, and they, they, they start making that bond. They start talking about life. And from there, like music's going to happen and it's going to be objectively, usually probably pretty good within time. We're probably going to make some pretty darn good music and have a lot of fun doing it. And honestly, I can't ask for much more. I mean, through an undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. you have so much you learn core credits and so many other things that you can get, really good at what you do yeah. but in many ways by the end of those four years by the time you're 22 and you've gone through k through 12 and college and everything i think the best thing you can do is make sure that the students are well equipped to handle life and make their own decisions and i think that that's an emotional thing um and to me if they achieve that then if they're excellent at trombone cool sure but mm -hmm. if they have the skill sets to be able to make their life better yeah. yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about so it's i i so yeah so i mean that's why it's so important um we implement that all the time and it's just it's just honestly that's what we look for when we hire staff and it's what we look for when we make our section leader choices it goes further than any application um and so that's just kind of what we built our our, our foundation on well said so for those of you watching i hope this last part especially um, that you can sort of listen to each of us talk about 
uh, you know, the value we chose and how we go about approaching that and not necessarily implement that specifically into your program, but think about, you know, does this value align strongly with something I believe? Um, and if not, what does, right? What, what does and how can you implement it? Um, so we'll go, we'll go around the table one final time here at the end. I do want to let everybody know that next week we are off. We are not um, meeting for design details next week. I got a nap. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take a... Or two. Uh, the nap of naps, yeah. Take, yeah, right? <laughs> um, so just be mindful of that. We'll be back in two weeks uh, to continue on. We've got, um, we're, we're excited about the future of, of what we've got going on here. So um, with that, let's go around one more time. Final thoughts on building, building culture and how to take what we've talked about today and implement it in your program. Uh, I'll actually start this time. I don't normally, mm -hmm. don't normally start. Um, so I'll just say the same thing, like list your values, list what is most important to you, and then sort of reverse engineer it. What are your values? What's your situation? How can you implement those values into your leaders? How can you implement those values into your performance, into your other students as well? Right. So I think if you, if you think about this from the last thing we've talked about and, and then kind of go backwards, that'll probably give you the most success in finding what is, excuse me, what is um, most successful for your program. So think through your values, think about how you implement them to your leadership, and then how you implement them into the rest of everybody who's part of your team. For, for myself, um, I think I got great advice back in 2007. I was a senior in high school and I was a drum major. And my director, who's a very good friend of mine, Dan Tucker, I just love him. He's one of my best friends, gave me great advice. And he said, I strongly believe that the band, the band's performance is a representation of the director or director's mentality. And it was really, really important advice. And I don't know if he even remembers he told me that, um, but it stuck with me through all these years. My best thing I can say is there's so many things you can do right now, but if it's not working, if it's not happening and the product of what you're trying to achieve isn't to the standard of what you want or students aren't respecting each other or you're having issues, you might have to take a look in the mirror and realize that it might take some self-development on your end too, some self-growth yeah. so, because chances are there's something that you are missing as well. And leaders are not afraid to admit mistakes or growth as well. Because if you're asking that from your students, you should be able to ask that of yourself. Absolutely. So I would, I would say that the biggest thing would be take a look in the mirror and make sure that everything you're wanting to achieve, you are also doing in your life. That's awesome. Yeah. For me, it's just the, the ever present reminder that we're just teaching humans and we're growing as people and we're trying to become better people and we're also guiding you know whether they're you know my little elementary school kids or the high schoolers or middle schoolers or college kids that you're teaching you're just helping them learn how to be better people and giving them opportunities to practice that so all the things we've talked about the values and the leadership opportunities and you know, everything that we're doing to build these better people, they're just ways to practice. And, you know, practice is where we make ourselves better. And hopefully we can practice to become good people. And we're helping, helping those kids do it too. So. Absolutely. Let's do mm -hmm. it. For those of you who are, who are with us still, thank you for being here. We hope that you've gotten some of what you need out of this. Um, Hopefully it's not just advice that you're copying, but just sort of a tool set that you can use to, to build your own uh, culture in your program through this weird time and hopefully beyond that as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, for those of us at Music Effect Design, we hope to see you in two weeks. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to hear more about. Um, we're always happy to kind of tailor what we need or what mm -hmm. we're delivering to what you need. Uh, so definitely let us know what you're looking for. Until next Friday, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye.